Hello everybody, welcome, welcome, welcome. How are you doing? Of course you realise this is the last Making It Monday for 2022. I did actually, I posted it all over, um, all over Facebook today. Um, and yeah, so it's quite significant. An actual fact, I think it's number 48, isn't it? So it's MIM A48. I'm going to check just to make sure I've said that. Yes, um, I knew that. I was just testing you out. Um, yeah, so it's uh, MIM A48. And um, so we've done really well. Considering it's 52 weeks in the year and we've got next week off, that would make it 49. So actually we've only missed three in a whole 12 a whole 12 months I'll get my teeth in in a minute um so this evening's a little bit special really um I I have arranged for us you to have a free pattern from me and our lovely Jackie Thomas has actually uh, put a comment on the on the in the comments what the link is and she's also put it in the title of the Facebook um, live as well now it's it's only free for when we're live okay because uh, otherwise it just gets crazy and I have thousands and thousands downloaded and I've never heard of you so why would I want to do that I only want to give it to the ladies and gents that follow me every week for the last 48 weeks to be fair so um, yeah so um, Jackie has posted the link to the free pattern. You just need to go to the website and download it. It's, it's You'd have to go through checkout, but there's no money. It's free. Um, and it's also in the title of this Facebook Live. And it's only available while we're on this live. So the next hour. So that does mean you disappearing off and ordering it. It will not be available after the live. So um, So don't ask. No, it's a, it's not going to be available after the live. This is to say thank you, really, to all the people that have followed me and supported me and Kath um, during the last 12 months uh, and before and hopefully in the future. Um, and it's a lovely pattern. There's a bit of a story behind it. Um, and some of you may have well made it. Um, I, don't, I don't know. Uh, do tell me if you have. But it's one of the very first patterns that I put on my YouTube channel, which was which we're probably going about, back about maybe five or six years, maybe longer. Let's say five or six years. I'm not sure. I don't keep track of things. Um, but it was one of the first patterns that I created and, and put on YouTube as a, as a freebie. And then since then, we I think I think we wrote up or I wrote up the pattern. I'm not sure. It's 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 one of those patterns that's been around for donkeys. And I don't remind myself what it looks like. I just know it's there. Um, and if I had the uh, always um, I've already got an order go through. Thank you, Sue. Um, so. Uh, I haven't got the cushion. I haven't. That's what the pattern is. The pattern is a, is a beautiful pleated cushion, and it's really super. It's one of what it's one of my favourites actually because it's got a few techniques in it. It's got the pleating and it's got the binding. Um, I think it's an envelope back from memory. I'm pretty sure because that's the easiest thing for everybody to do. Um, but it has got a couple of techniques in there, which is nice. But I, I don't have the cushion anymore. I don't know where it is. It could be buried in my garage in a box somewhere. But I certainly wasn't going to go and try and find it. <laughs> not just to show and tell you can see by the picture what it looks like when you get to the website so um yeah there we are so um i've got an eye on i've put a, a quite a fairly large quantity on there but i'll we'll keep an eye on that um because we usually get to about 200 viewers thereabouts um, and that should do us but we'll see we'll see how we get on um, now, for YouTubers, I'm hoping that we've got some YouTubers on there today. Um, I'm not sure. I haven't seen a YouTube comment come up yet on my screen. I'm assuming we are live in YouTube. I'll just have a little look. Sorry, I've got to squint through my eyes, through my glasses. <clears throat> I'll have a little look. Because what I'll do for YouTubers, I will put the link in there today. Um, it, it, the, at the end of the day, as soon as we finish the live, I'm going to... Oh, yes, it is there. That's fine. Is it public? Yes, it is. Sorry, I'm, I'm twittering away. I'm twittering away because I don't know what I'm doing. Let's have a look. <laughs> right, here we go. Uh, so let me just put the link in there. And then as soon as... That's great. That's gone in. Save. So as... <laughs> Gosh, 
it's for YouTube it's, it's in the description okay so I'm hoping you'll know where descriptions are on YouTube if you're a YouTuber you should know where um, where the description box is so just hurry along there and while we're live until roughly eight o'clock then that pattern will be free for you um, after that no way no way no way <laughs> okay yes and thank you all and yes merry christmas as well and um, thank you so much for joining me it's been an absolute treat um we, st we still haven't finished um our customer services will be down from i think it's thursday tea time through to the 2nd of january but it is that that is only customer services that is only like inquiries and questions and things like that we, we're not going to do that over the christmas period but we'll still be we're still going to be live here on certain days and still doing our thing because that's what we love to do so um yeah so thank you very much indeed um thank you jackie it's actually the nutcracker it's a popsy dress of course and it's the nutcracker I could do with losing a couple of stone, but then couldn't we all? I speak for it, speak for myself. But it is the nutcracker. There he is. No. There he is. <laughs> and it's one of Pops's um, Christmas dresses uh, for this year. And um, yes, it's quite it's quite pretty, isn't it? It's quite long. It's quite floaty. It's got pockets, and it's got a tie belt there, which is. Mm, I need a corset. Never mind a belt. Anyway. <laughs> Let's move on. So, so don't forget the uh, pattern is free. Jackie has put the link up the top there. Don't don't keep sharing the link. If you if you ask, um, you'll just be told to go and have a look on the the the, the top of the um, comments or on the description of the Facebook Live. Okay, because that's where the link is. We won't keep posting. It's ridiculous. The post the, the feed gets gets clogged up with. Where's the pattern? Where's the pattern? <laughs> Well, not that you speak like that, but you know what I'm saying. You know what I'm saying. Anyway, thank you very much. <laughs> so we've got a bit of a corker to finish off this year. Sorry uh, to, to make a joke of it, but we're going to make corky. <laughs> now, look, this is supposed to be a Christmas tree. And it was only when I took a photo of it on my wine bottle behind me, Popsy, that I realised it could easily be mistaken for a gnome but it is a Christmas tree and when you go to the when you download the pattern you get the Christmas tree design which is literally that because we're doing foundation paper piecing the basic level guys so nothing to worry about and there's also a heart as well so I show you there's also a heart as well so actually this although this is very suitable for now um, it's actually because of the heart it's suitable for all year round and if you want to make um, a label for somebody really special this is going to be the one that you're going to make okay it's a good size I'm, I deliberately wanted it to be big and bold because really it's part of the gift isn't it it's not a tag or label that you're going to um, tear off and put in the bin this is something that's been created by you to give to somebody special and if they if you know your friend relative etc and you think they might throw it away, you ask for it back, okay? <laughs> you have my permission. Because <laughs> I'm going to give this to my sister on Wednesday. I know my sister incredibly well, and this will go in the bin. So as soon as she's opened her present, I'm actually going to take it off the present and, and take it back, put it in my handbag. And I don't mind admitting it. <laughs> so... <laughs> So it, this really is a gorgeous, gorgeous label. There's lots of layers, lots of business going on. We're going to do this um, foundation paper piecing, which is really fun. I'm going to talk you through it. For something simple, it's actually, there's a lot going on. On the back, we have we have the, the ribbons and they, you need to have them separate so you can tie it round something. On the back, I've just used some calico just a, a, a plain cotton will do and I have you can see I have written on there to you from me <laughs> in my heat erasable pen because you see if you snaffle it back you can iron that off and you could rewrite it when the appropriate time comes and then you take it back again all right give it take it back give it take it back just practice that that's your little mantra yeah um, of course, you could, if you're incredibly clever and you have the time, you could embroider somebody's name on there. You can write 
anything you like, anything you like. Um, your whole poem you could write on there if you want to, with embroidery, whatever. But you get the idea that it's, this is kind of like, um, a, like a whiteboard or a blackboard <laughs> because you can write clear it off right again clear it off right again and now of course you obviously the, the christmas tree why don't why don't make it a, a spring blossom tree make it out of um you know pinks and whites and things like that um but you've got the heart so you've got the choice of the two designs so so from from something that looks quite simple and you might think, oh, I'm not sure about that. Actually, there's a lot going on. And we're doing satin stitch around here as well. And um, all the layers are glued together, although we stitch as well. So, you know, you're covered. If you just want to glue it and leave it, of course you can do that. But um, yeah, so you've got all those options. So really, our lovely little corky is a corker. And now I haven't done a thing. I thought because this is the last Making It Monday project for 2022, I would go through the whole thing with you. I mean, to be honest, it doesn't. Well, I don't think it takes too long. Anyway, let's pop. Let's pop him back here. Let's see if I can prop him up there. There we are. He's been on the sherry. There we go. You can just about see him tucked there. Looks like a candle now. Oh, my goodness. You see? multitude of different designs right so i'm going to pop you on the top of my bench so you can see what i'm up to let's see if we can do that oh here we are there we go so um i do use a postcard for uh, foundation paper piecing this is such a small project you perhaps won't need to do that um but i use a this is one of my postcards okay so you might want to use a postcard You'll need, obviously, the main pattern piece here, um, and you need both sizes, but I'm going to show you how to get the second size um, anyway, okay? So, um, anyway, let's just stop rabbiting. You've got the tree as well, and obviously, like I said before, you've got the heart, but we'll put the heart to one, one side, because actually I want to make two, one for my sister and one for my brother-in-law. So, according to the pattern... I haven't ironed my fabrics and I must do that because it really makes a difference with your cutting and everything um, to iron everything. But I'll, I'll cut first and then I'll iron, I think. That'll be the best thing. So I need two, two um, of the outer pieces. If we look at the pattern, it says, um, in fact, this one, if you, it says to cut two from outer fabric. So I reckon I can get two on there. So let's just fold this really neatly. I, I was a bit, I was a bit... Oh yes, plenty. I put a little bit of adhesive on the back so it just sticks down really nicely on my uh, fabric. And then I'm just going to use my, uh, what is it, a rotary cutter and, and ruler to cut it out. Um, and it obviously because it's very secure, you can use, um, oh I spelt it wrong. Um, <laughs> you can use, um, Oh, how funny. See, I do that sort of thing, and then I change my mind, and I call it something else, and blah, blah, blah. Yeah, I forgot what I was saying now. But anyway, whatever the case, that's what you can do. Now, all of these pieces, don't ever think they're wasted, because I've got, in, in the Making It Monday section of the website, there is a little purse. I can't remember what it's called. But it's a little purse it's one of the one of the really older ones and you can do crumb quilting with all these bits not perhaps the really small bits but um yeah they're not so small pieces so there's our two um pieces now it says it's back and front label pieces so this is back and front label pieces okay so we'll give them a quick iron and then we're going to put our H250. Now I've said a medium weight stabiliser, so I it's up to you what how you consider the weights, but um, this is the one I always say is medium weight, um, and it just does the trick. It's not too um, stiff and it's not too soft, let's put it that way. So I'm just tucking that right into the corner there so I don't get much wastage. And I'm putting my other label right next to it. Now you could stabilize your whole piece of fabric before you cut. 
Um, uh, but you've got to understand that the waste will then be stabilised, whereas doing it this way, you're only stabilising the bits you need. So horses for courses, it might be something that you're, you're happy to do. Right, so I'm just going to get my big scissors. I'm just going to roughly chop into that. So you can see I'm using scraps and this is a great scrap buster, but if you want to make two or three, obviously just have a, have a think about that. Um, the other thing is all of these edges, if you have a little bit of stabilizer on the edge, you may well see it, but if you sat in stitch around like we're going to do, it, you shouldn't have any too much bother with it. Okay, you won't have too much bother. So there's one. So hopefully if, if you're stitching along, Diana Marge, if you're stitching along, then I'm going at a pace that you can keep up with. Um, I do go fairly quickly because we don't want to spend too much time on, on the boring bits of cutting. So you can see I've got a little, can you see I've got little bits of stabiliser showing, but I'm not too worried about that. So then go from the, the back of your piece and just give that another iron. Okay, and we will actually be putting some bonder whip on the back of these. So, oh, here we are. I'm just reading it. I'm just reading it to make sure I'm doing it, doing it right. So on one of them, so consider that to be your front. So we'll just pop it there for a moment. This, let's consider that to be the back. So we're going to put, it, put some bonder web on the back of our back. I know, I don't know quite how else to say it. So on one of the pieces, you're attaching some bonder web. Now, this is something I wanted to do, but when I was putting this together, oh, I better do it roughly, um, I, I still stitched, I still stitched. Whereas really, you don't really need to stitch because this bonder web is going, or heat and bond actually this is, it is going to glue everything down. So let's just peel, not peel it, let's just cut that away. Okay, so I'm following exactly what the pattern is telling me. So if you've got the pattern in front of you, those of you have got the digital pass. Now don't forget, it's the last digital pass ever. I won't be doing digital passes anymore. Um, it, 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 uh, it's to had a good run. I've enjoyed it. I know you've enjoyed it as well. But all good things come to an end. Um, <laughs> so don't forget, uh, oh, Yvonne, she's in Brighton. Oh my goodness me, you, oh dear dear, water problem with the motorhome. Oh, I am sorry Yvonne. Oh gosh, and you're having a lot, you're going down to have a lovely time. So I put Bonder Web on the one half, okay? We're going to work on this one when we do the tree. Now let's have a look at what else it says. Uh, apply Bonder Web to the wrong side, I've done that. And the smaller template pieces, okay. So we need to cut the smaller ones. Now one of them is, um, calico, which I'll just give a little iron to, and the other one is a beautiful gold fabric, which I'm just going to lay on top like that. I always put my hand, do you do that when you iron? Do you put your hand on it? I suppose because we're always trying to get warm, aren't we? Um, and we're going to put our label back on. You know it's glued, so you know it's not going anywhere. Because we've got a couple of layers, you could put a pin um, to hold both layers together, but it might interfere with your ruler when you're cutting. Just see how you go. So this time we're going to cut. In fact, I'm, I am going to remove it because it does. you need a flat-headed pin. You need one of those um, flower pins. So this time I'm going to cut both of those out um, on, the, on the quarter inch line. So just, and like I said, don't, don't fret about waste. Uh, gosh, I, do you know what? I see, I see more things about waste than I do anything else. Um, I think we do get a bit hung up about it because it's fabric is precious. 
but I suppose like me if you're working with it all day every day it loses its preciousness <laughs> a little bit so we kind of get a little bit blasé oh look see I didn't I didn't cut my see what I mean that's what happens when you're not concentrating so we're cutting, <laughs> cutting these down <laughs> along the line <laughs> oh dear did anybody tell me is anybody shouting at me? I don't mind. I, t I can take it. I'm a big girl, so I can take it. Right, so cut that off there. Okay, that's super. So I won't keep those scraps. That would be silly. So this time we've got our calico label and we've got our gold label. So if I put my... Oh, I, let me get it. If I put my tree down there... This is the gold bit, okay? So you can see that's going to go on the back of there and that's going to go on the back of this one, okay? So I'll just put it back. There we go, that's flopped down. So that, that one I've now finished with. So we've done quite a bit of prep already, but we need to put bond web on the back of those. So let's get the bond web in. Hopefully I've got enough. I think I've got some more handy. So... Let's just, and this is what I mean about, you know, you can make this and you can make quite a few and not stitch them. You could, this, is, this was the whole idea of this. I wanted a project that you could use fabric, but literally you're gluing it together, which is no cheat. Don't ever think that's a cheat. I'm just trying to be clever and tuck that in. To the front hold on i'm getting lots of orders come through so i hope you enjoy that pattern it's a really super duper pattern like i say it's the first one of the first ones i ever put on my youtube channel and um like i say i really loved first of all i loved the process of making it but also when it was finished it looked really classy and it's a good size it's 16 inches so it's a really good size. Um, yeah, it, it makes a difference when they're big and plumptious. So there's our bonder web on the back of that. I'll give that another little press just to make sure that holds fast and the glue is melted. It doesn't need a lot, I must admit. And then the calico, let's just run our scissors around there. So I hope you're all keeping well. I hope you're all okay. I hope um, you're now basking in subtropical temperatures. Um, it's been 13 degrees today in, in Suffolk. Really odd, considering what it's being like. Um, yeah, we've all, uh, we've all had a bit touch of the weather, haven't we, this week? But that's, uh, that's why we live in Britain, isn't it? Because we have that wonderful weather. <laughs> Right, I'm just going to turn my iron right down to low now, because I'll need it in a minute. So I think I'm, I'm pretty prepped. Um, let me have a look. Cut out the tree heart matching. Uh, so the other things I've got are the four inch strips. So they're one inch by four. I've got two different designs. I've got little stars. Sorry. I've got little stars and I've got like ferns. And I've got... Let me just make a little gap and I've got kind of like a snow seam so instead of doing you know one two three one two three I'm actually doing the, the snow scene in between so I'll get my fern again here I could do with a better fern that's a better fern that's nice isn't it that bit um, and then snow scene again and we need seven so one two three four five one two three four five six and now we need the stars. I think that's right. And if we haven't got stars, yes we have. I was going to say I'll, I'll just uh, use one of the others. But there we are. And then I've got a little piece like that for the top. Okay, so I think we're all good with our four inch strips. I'll put them to one side. So now it's a case of building up our tree. So I'm going to follow the pattern um, just to make sure I'm doing this the same as you guys. So I'm just going to move these onto my desk so I know what order they're going to go in. 
I'll just move those all along. I'm going to move my phone because it's very distracting because all I can see are orders coming through. Okay. So we're going to get our tree in now. So it, foundation paper piecing is really weird because everything goes on at the back. The back becomes the front and we stitch on the bit where we can see the lines. I mean, if I flip that over, I mean, I can just about see through it, but that wouldn't be ideal for stitching. So we always stitch where we can see the very clearly the lines. So the first two pieces and doing it like little strips like this is so, so easy. So we're just going to put two strips. <clears throat> That's a bit wonky, isn't it? Let's get another one. We're going to put two strips right sides together. Okay, so there's two right, two right sides facing. So they're going to be right sides together. Okay. Oh dear. There we go. It's not quite four inches, but it doesn't matter because we're going to trim it. And then with your piece of paper, <clears throat> you're going to fold back on that first line. So this isn't your first line, that's the base. But this is your first line for your tree. Okay, now I always pretty much use a postcard just to hold it up to that line and fold it back you don't have to it's just that's what I like to do and then you're going to place your fold and you'll see this in the pattern you're going to place your folded piece so you've got um, about a quarter inch showing here okay and then you're just going to flip that back like that and if you want to if you're not feeling confident pop a pin in and then we're going to stitch across that line there, from there across to there. So where my two fingers are. You can see the crease. That's where we're going to stitch. Okay, hopefully, hopefully that's made some sense. So let's just bring you in. And then once you've done one or two, I'm just moving my accoutrements. Once you've done one or two, you'll be fine. So I'm just going to have a little shuffle around. That's it, I'll have to bring my mouse back in. Okay, so that's what we've got. We've got two pieces, right sides together. Sorry if I'm in, in, the, in the way. And you've folded your piece on that line there. So when you fold it back, you've got a quarter inch sticking out the top, okay? And then we're gonna stitch right across. And if you want to, you can start from here where my thumb is, and you can go all the way across, okay? Please yourself, please yourself. Uh, we're going to cut it away anyway. So we're just going to stitch along that line. Just about see that, okay. Now, if you want to, turn your stitch length down to, to one and a half, okay, because it, it just helps with the tearing off of the paper. Don't worry about needles. Don't worry that you're stitching paper. Um, it's such a small piece of paper. You know what? It's not going to make a jot of difference, not really. And if you've been stitching for a couple of days and you haven't changed your needle, then it's not going to make a jot of difference anyway, because your needles are blunt. So I'm just trimming my ends. I'm not using my fancy machines tonight. I'm just using my little old Benina here, my 1008, which is just the best machine in the world. Um, <laughs> I'm not really biased. Um, so there we are, I've done, I've stitched across there, you can hardly see it, but I've stitched across there to there. So now what you're going to do is flip it over and just finger press that one that you've just stitched back. Okay, so finger press it or get your iron on it, it's up to you. So it looks like that. Okay, flip it back over again. Okay, flip it back over so it looks like that. Then you're going to fold that second line there okay so i'm going to do it with my postcard because then i get an accurate fold and i'll show you on the side camera just where we are what that looks like so i've used my postcard sort of to butt up against that line really it just sits in there nicely and i've got that crease and i've folded my paper back and you can see that i've got my Roughly, I've got a quarter inch seam allowance there. I mean, you should, ideally, you should have a quarter inch, but it depends on whether you've um, laid your, your uh, materials on properly. So now what we're going to do is we're going to get our second piece and we're going to put it right sides together with that last piece. 
So you're just literally laying strips on top of each other. Try to get the edges, the raw edges lined up, which we have. And then you're going to flip that paper back. Okay. So underneath there, you've got two layers. Can you see? Super. And then we're just going to pop it under the machine again. And we're going to stitch along that line again. Like I say, you can um, stitch all the way across if you like. But this is meant to be quite primitive, actually, in a way. So there's our third piece stitched. So once again, you're going to flip it over to the wrong side. And you're going to finger press or iron that last piece. Oh, I meant to have used silver. Oh, well, I messed up my pattern now. <laughs> so you think that should have been silver. I wasn't concentrating. So just give it a finger press. Okay. Flip it back. And then you're folding on this line here. So you're one, two, three. So I'm going to use my postcard. Because that's, that's just how how I, how I do foundation paper piecing. Fold it back. And that's what you should have. So it looks like that. Okay, if you look at the front, it looks like that. But look at the back, that's where, we, that's where we're at. So flip that back. And then this time I will use the silver like I'm supposed to. And pop it underneath and like I say you want to make sure that your edges are sitting on top of each other it's getting a bit wonky now isn't it, it shouldn't do your seams won't be it's just the fabric that is um, so okay so you've got those lined up nicely and then you're going to flip it back and you're going to stitch along that line again okay So like I say, you can go from the outside. So from something, like I say, that started off life, oh, it's just a label. Actually, if you do this, you're learning perhaps how to do foundation paper piecing. If you've never done it before, um, you could go on to great things. <laughs> um, so there we are. So I've stitched that along that line now. So if I flip it over, I can fold it back and I've got the perfect, perfect, perfect line. Okay, so just finger press it. And now we're on number four. I really will have to straighten this fabric up. <laughs> but our stitch lines are perfect. It's just my fabric that's going off kilter. So now I'm going to flip it again and fold along that next line. So you can see how rep repetit repeat yeah how how it repeats <laughs> and then I'm going to use my gold again put that layer underneath Let's see if I can straighten that up a little bit there we go that's a bit better so I've got two layers now where my thumbs are I'm going to flip that back and now I'm going to stitch along that line there so um, foundation paper piecing <clears throat> is actually incredibly accurate unless you unless you can't stitch in a straight line but at the end of the day it, it's all going to be attached into other well usually it's attached into other seams um, and yeah you end up with a really really accurate result I'm still <laughs> My fabric's still off kilter. It's not making a just a difference, but I really need to straighten it up. So there we are. That's what it looks like now. Finger press it back, flip it over, and we're going to now fold along this line here. And if you want to fold it back without the postcard, you see, I'm so used to that. I'm not sure I can do it. If you use proper foundation paper piecing paper, you can see right through and it's dead easy. It's really great. I highly recommend it, but it's expensive. So there we are. So we flip back on that line again. And I'm going to use the silver. I'm going to try and straighten it up a little bit. I'm not sure I'm making a lot of difference, to be honest. Um, 
and you can see I've got my overhang there and all I'm going to do is flip that back and stitch it. In fact I'm just going to move that like that. See if I can straighten up a bit. I mean it really doesn't matter because your stitch line is, is straight so it really doesn't matter as long as you've got enough fabric you're fine. So we're stitching along that line And there's lots of rules about foundation paper piecing, which, you know, we don't have to cover. We're just doing a really, really simple form. But if you were, if you enjoyed this, you could go on to do more. And, um, yeah, it's really, really... Well, it's, it's like I say, it's to very, very accurate. Um, and you can, you can piece the smallest of pieces. So we're just flipping back giving it a crease and then we've got our last gold one right sides together just get the edges lined up not, not that it makes a, much of a difference flip that back and then stitch there we go so let's take it out of the machine the trouble is I haven't got a thread well I have got a thread cutter on this machine but too lazy to use it so flip that back okay and there's the there's the start of our tree and now we've just got this last triangle to do and that is um it's a lot bigger than you think because you've got to cover right up here you want it to go all of these you want to go beyond this line really by a quarter of an inch or so but you want it to be wider so where where i said in the pattern i think three inches you really want to make sure it covers that entire piece that we've got sitting in front of us there. So again, we're going to just do exactly the same. Just fold it back. I'm going to try and do it. Oh, that's OK. Fold it back <laughs> and I'm just going to get an edge. I mean, you, you can cut it um, to the to the size I've said, but I'm literally going to find an edge and just just stitch it like that. So right size together. This is a boutique, so it doesn't matter. But, um, and again, so flip that back and then we're just going to stitch along that last line. There we go. Okay. So let's just trim and trim. And then you can see how rough that looks, but then we're just going to flip it back, give it a finger press. And we've covered our entire piece. So if we look at the... The, the wrong side let's say you can see everything is now covered we're we've totally covered that piece um, right so what I'm going to do um, I want to put some bonder web on here so what I'm going to do in the pattern I tell you to cut the tree out well no I'm going to stick to doing what I said in the pattern okay so um, give this an iron <laughs> <laughs> I finger pressed all the way through so I'm fine with that and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to stitch on this side and I'm going to follow the shape of the tree all the way around okay um, just to give it definition and it all also helps us cut out the tree accurately so just start on one of the one of the corners if you like put your needle into the corner you might want to put your stitch length up a little bit to maybe two because we're not doing the, the paper piecing now. Just make sure all your layers are sitting beautifully and you're following your triangle. So your actual black line, you're just following that. Right up to the point. Okay, swivel it around and then you're just coming down the other side. Okay. And then we're going across the bottom. Okay, let me just cut my threads here. That's it. Straight across the bottom. So I've got a nice, it's not gold thread, but it's a nice yellow to match my batik. And I'm just doing a couple of um, stitches up so I don't have to do a back stitch. I always find back stitches are very ugly. So I just go over the top of my previous stitches and then trim, trim, trim as necessary. So you can see. So now we've got the shape of the tree. You can just make it out there. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is actually trim that to size 
and then we're going to take the papers off and again it's it's one of those things that you there's there's certain little things that you need to think about and that's why I'm covering it tonight it's quite a nice quite a nice little um, tuition really so if we go on the overhead then we can get a better um, feel of what I'm going to do just push that away so let me just look at the pattern make sure I'm following it as I've said yeah I'm okay with that so um, we don't need the postcard anymore but what we do need to do is to trim this back so you can just about see where my lines are now on my lines you're going to place your ruler and you're going to put the quarter inch line of your ruler um, doo -doo -doo. this is a good ruler to see but I just want to make sure you're fully aware you see on my ruler you, I've got a dash line going up here which is which is the quarter inch that's my dash line that's the quarter inch I'm going to put that dash line on my machined line which so it makes my tree quarter inch bigger all the way around okay so I'm just going to line it up on my stitch line and then cut okay so can you see my stitch line and there's the edge there that I've just cut and then I'm going to do the other side so line it up don't worry about this top bit because we're just going to trim that a little bit I haven't said that in the pattern but I'd like to think that um, you would realize that but and then on the bottom we'll just let's just straighten that up a little bit so that should be on on the line right okay so that's that's our tree and we've got threads here and stuff but we're going to put bond web on there so it's all going to glue it so this very top bit here rather than have that point which looks a bit ugly um, I've actually just got my scissors and rounded that off just so it looks a little bit neater okay just about see it so now we need to take the papers off now wherever you have stitched start and finish unless you've done a back stitch all of these stitches are really vulnerable to you tearing them so I don't want you to tear your stitches I want you to be really careful so I would my top tip is to hold your the edge of your stitches and tear out there's no rules to this you've just got to be really careful if you get to the point where you've torn as much as you want to tear and some copy paper is really strong and some is really um, thin and the thinner the better the cheaper the better this is when you know you go to your local supermarket and get their 70 GSM paper and the price of it has gone up have you noticed that oh my gosh I went to Wilkinson's not long ago or oh, how long I don't know a year maybe less than that and I bought some print paper and it was two pounds fifty and now it's I think four pounds seventy so just watch your stitches it's not crucial because like I said we're going to glue this down and glue it together with bonder web but um, like I say just just go canny as they say and because we've perforated the paper with our needle it should just rip it's quite satisfying really but do you notice I'm doing the middle and I'm ignoring the outsides for the moment your middle stitches kind of like where the ladder is if you like is uh, they're quite strong okay they're quite strong so you can sort of rip at those <laughs> um, but the ones on the edge are the vulnerable ones so I want you to be careful with those you can use tweezers you can use your hermit hemostats you could use your quick unpick your pokey tool um, whatever it takes to get this paper off okay whatever it takes whatever you leave nobody's going to know okay nobody's going to unpick your work and check to make sure that you've re removed all your papers and if they do you send them around to my house I've got a Millie that will sort them out <laughs> gosh she'd lick them to death right so 
just be careful with your stitches like I say I just did a little rip there but I'm figuring you're getting bored now so last little bits just take a little bit of that away and I'm done <laughs> I'm done I'm done I'm done so let's get all that paper out of the way okay so we need to put some bonder web on the back of this one so I'll just switch my iron back up and uh, not bond away uh, yeah bond web heat and bond that type of thing and we're just going to I'm just going to stick it on for a bit and then I'll cut round it okay so I've got a nice big piece here I think I'd exhausted my scraps are you still with me <laughs> you, st you haven't dropped off to sleep or anything <laughs> oh dear so it's the glue side up wrong side of your work down and I'm literally going to just make sure the edge has um, has got uh, um, the glue on it. And then I can just gently do that. And then I can just cut round. I'm, ju I'm just following my pattern, make sure I've done this right. I think so. Adhere bond web to the reverse of the tree. That's what I'm doing. It's a funny thing, when you write a pattern, I write it as if... I'm talking out loud uh, and consequently it doesn't always make sense. I was having a, a conversation with my nail technician this morning. I was trying to tell her about the film, I think it's called, <laughs> I think it's called The Wonderful Mr. Banks and it's about, you know, Walt Disney and Mary, the Mary, lady that wrote Mary Poppins and all of that. And did you any, ever you watch it this, yesterday? And I started off the conversation with, oh, I watched a lovely film yesterday. Um, now then, uh, let me think, now what was it called? <laughs> and it was awful. <laughs> and we spent an hour trying to, trying to um, figure out who the, who the stars were. Saving Mr. Banks, that's the one. And um, who the author was and, oh, gosh, we got into a, well, I did. I got into a right muddle with it. And, and in the end, some of the other customers were joining in. And one lady said, oh, that's the one that um, Johnny Depp starred in. I said, oh, no, no, it wasn't Johnny Depp. No, 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 it's that other fella. <laughs> I mean, what? That's as useless as a glass teapot, isn't it? I mean, a chocolate teapot. <laughs> that other fella. So then we narrowed it down to Colin, what is his name, Colin, Colin Farrell, oh whatever, whatever, see I can't even remember now, we talked about it just a few hours ago. Right, so um, I've taken the backing off my bonder web, you can see the glue, and that's going to now get stuck down onto there. I could just do with trimming my tree, look. So we'll just trim that down a bit. Saving Mr Banks, oh that's such a lovely film isn't it? Oh, and I've watched it so many times, and oh, it's still just lovely. Right, my room is back, and we're here to your chosen man. Take the back and stick to the main label. Right. <laughs> so, we're going to stick this label now. This is the small background, don't forget. And we're using the gold because the calico goes on the other one. And now I'm just very carefully letting that heat get through to stick down. Okay, let me just have a look at my original one just to see. Yes, I'm happy with that. Happy with that. I'll just pop that there and then I can see it. So just make sure that heat goes through because if you think about it, it's quite a lot of layers going on there. So just make sure your heat gets through. Lovely. And now what we can do is to take the front piece, which is the one without the bonder web, but we has the stabiliser and we're going to pop that onto the um, the whole bit onto our, our our front okay our front so I'm just taking the bonder web heat and bond whatever you use paper off and that just goes over the top so you're kind it's a bit little bit like card making you're building up those layers and again we're just going to let that heat go through and it's got the heat and oh, sorry the h250 on the back 
but you could still probably just go from the back as well and just get that heat going all the way through but this time we're actually going to stitch on our background label so we're going to stitch on this and we're going to hold it down make sure because although like I keep saying it's the layers if anything where your heat may not get through so I'm going to stitch all the way around there and I think in the pattern it, I show you hopefully at some point I show you so we're just going to take our label and <coughs> oh, hold on folks I'm just going to stitch that on now I'm not going to stitch on my tree I'm going to avoid my tree let me just check mine yeah avoid your tree um, do a little back stitch if you want and then we're just going to it's almost decorative if anything and that's going to hold all the layers together nice and securely just try and get it even yeah that was a lovely film oh leslie says she watched it last week oh it's just so lovely and then off around the top of your tree there don't worry if you're stitching the tree and nobody's going to notice. Come down. Trying to keep my hands out of the way. And then down the other side. Don't worry about raw edges. If, if raw edges really annoy you, then satin stitch all of that. Satin stitch it all. It'll be lovely. It'll look really super. So we'll just trim that away, trim this away, there we go, okay let's just push the machine out of the way and that's the front done, well, obviously we've got to decorate it but we'll do that in a little while. So for the back, so this is the back here, we've got the calico and we've got our main back piece, so let's just follow what it says here, uh, the backing paper. Right, <laughs> so we're going to attach our calico piece to our background piece. So just peel that away. I don't like scratching because I always think we're going to damage the, the fabric. So just be careful. If I use heat and bond or steamer seam, I never, ever, ever have to scratch. It's only heat and bond that, that, um, that I have to do that with because it's a finer, it's a finer um, uh, paper, it's a finer paper. Okay, so just apply that down. I think we, we should machine around that as well. Yes, we do. So we'll do that. And of course that, again, that holds it down. The glue holds it down. The stitching holds it down, but the stitching also is lovely and decorative. So we'll just do that. Bring all this in. Got a bit of a heat going on now. Again, I'll just start at the bottom. So maybe an eighth of an inch in. So all the way around. This is purely decorative. Again, you could do satin stitch around here as well. It depends on how much work you want to, to give yourself, really. Um, I would say if you're going to ask for it back, <laughs> do it. <laughs> if you if you're going to give it away, well, that's up to you. <laughs> Depends how lovely that person is. <laughs> okay, let's see if I can do one more stitch. Let's just cut those threads before I get to them. We're not far off finishing. We've got the satin stitch to do around the outside, which I particularly enjoy doing. But obviously, it takes quite a bit of thread. And then I'm just going to run up those stitches there. That's it. Okay, sorry. Just cut those. Okay, so there's our piece done there. So the next stage, 
is to let's take this picture and I drew the back of it up, right? So <laughs> we're removing the backing paper of our bondage. I mean, you could do that before you stitch, it might be easier. So we're just removing that, getting taking that all away. It'd probably be easier if we'd done that, but there we are. Actually, I just remembered why I put that in the pattern because the bonder web is a glue, obviously, and it will stick to the bed of your machine. Um, you can use a little bit of powder to stop that happening and it still glues down just as well, but it's because um, it sticks to your, the bed of your machine and it can jar your stitching. You wonder why you're not stitching. It's because it's, it's, it's attaching itself to the bottom of your machine here. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to get our two um, outer pieces. We're going to measure a little piece of ribbon here, about nine inches, thereabouts. Um, oh, actually, it's a bit longer than that. Um, I would say 18 inches. So if you read my pattern, it should actually be 18 inches. It's nine inches um, uh, either side. But you make it as long as you like. So we're just going to attach it there like this. Now then, what I did with mine is I got my little mat, put my label on there, just get those so they're fairly equal. Lay that flat, get it in the middle, and then get two pins and just pin that down. Okay, so it's now exactly where you want it to be. Now, because we've got ribbon here, there's no glue to attach it here. So we need to cut a little bit of um, bonder web again, or heat and bond, whatever you use. So uh, let me get my big mat. And I'm gonna just transfer that to my big mat. Um, <clears throat> so pop it down again. So you want to put the folded end of your ribbon onto your uh, label okay and this is the back of the label to be honest it doesn't matter whether it's the front or the back but um, yeah so then we're going to put a little square of bonder web just there so when we attach it to that there's some glue on there to attach to the ribbon and it all adheres together so let's see yep that's stuck that's fine I'll just flash it so you can see little square so get it all lined up and you're making a sandwich. There we go. So don't forget to put your ribbon in. <clears throat> and then you're just literally gluing the layers together. So again, it might take a while. Careful you don't burn anything. You've got lots of layers to go through. And like I say, if, um, if you wanted to leave the satin stitch out, I mean, to be honest, you could hand stitch. You know, if, <coughs> excuse me, if you're a hand stitch, if you like, doing your blanket stitch by hand, then this is the perfect time to sit in front of the TV and um, hand stitch all the way around, or just leave it, just leave it as a raw edge. In fact, make it, make it more obvious that it's a raw edge. Make it more obvious. If you've got a big iron, use your big iron and use a little bit of steam because the heat of the steam is superb for getting getting around, uh, getting through the layers, getting through the layers, that's what I'm trying to say. So just take your time with this, you really want it to stick. Um, if I was on my own without you guys here, I'd be getting my big press out and putting it under that, because that's super for that. So there we are, I think I think we've, we've got the layers together, but we need to go around the edge with, with um, a lovely satin stitch now. It's not a wide satin stitch, it's not, uh, the stitch length is quite, what, what have I put? I think it's 2.5 width and 0.5 length, which, is, which works out as, as absolutely perfect for me. You might want to do something a little bit different, um, but like I say, that is, that is absolutely perfect for me. So, just going to pop it under the machine and we'll do a lovely satin stitch all the way around. Okay, so anybody that has... Um, just joined us or 
has come, come in at the last minute, you have got literally five minutes to get your free pattern. And as soon as this live is over, that pattern will go up to its regular price. I think it's two two ninety nine. Not sure. Can't remember. But it will go up to its regular price. Um, and there'll be no comebacks of that at all. Oh, my my stitches are skipping like crazy. Okay. Don't know what's happened there. I maybe need to rethread this machine because that's I'll show you because it's always good to show. Don't know why I was perfectly fine earlier. <laughs> Let me show you what that looks like. You can see, I don't know if you can see, it's skipped a load of stitches. So I'm just going to re-thread. I forgive it because it's an old machine and I love it. <laughs> and uh, I don't mind if it misbehaves. It deserves to be. I don't know how old it is. How old would it be? Maybe 50 years old, maybe? I don't know. Maybe 30. 30. Let's go mad and say 30. Put the foot down, you get more room. Foot up. Let's try that again and see what happens. If it um, doesn't want to play, then I can do it another time. See how we get on. Oh, it's still skipping. How bizarre. That's never happened to me before. <laughs> it's what they call sod's law, isn't it? How bizarre. Let's tighten it up a bit, see what happens. No, it's still skipping. Maybe it needs a new needle. I don't know, let's, let's just go round anyway. I can always unpick it and uh, do it. Actually, I could sit and hand stitch, that would be nice. Oh, come on, little sweet machine, you can do it. What machine's funny? <laughs> It never worries me because I think, oh, it's just, it's, it's always user error, isn't it? Pretty much. But hardly ever the machine. I've probably got it halfway on a setting or something. It's thinking, yeah, right. <laughs> you, you don't know what you're doing, woman. <laughs> it's still skipping. Just every so often it's skipping. So goodness knows why. Who knows why? I'm just looking at me dials. Nothing's untoward. So we'll just uh, we'll just carry on. I mean, it's just such a lovely machine. <laughs> she says, oh, "It's all over the place." Come on, don't matter. Because what I can do, I can just run my pick her all the way round. Yeah, it's look, it's not, it's not having it at all. Look at that. It's also it's thread, it's um shredded the thread. <sighs> let's let's just let's just cut that off and start again. Have you ever read about um how you shouldn't pull your threads through the machine? You should always cut uh, at the at the needle. Um, and uh, guide it through gently or something. I don't know, I never do, but that's what you're supposed to do with thread. You're not supposed to just suddenly take it out of the machine because it can damage your tension. Well, hmm, I don't think I've ever done that in, in all my years. And um, there we are. <laughs> Perhaps that's what it's telling me. Perhaps it's saying don't pull your threads out love yeah it's not happy but there we are we'll just we'll just carry on like it's like we can pretend it's fine just go all the way along and where you where you started which is about now instead of just leaving your threads um loose if you like then Come round the corner and just do one or two stitches, just one or two, not any more, along that first little bit. It's the worst bit of satin stitch I have ever done on this machine. And I just want to show you that it did that yesterday. Beautiful. Okay, today. 
really complete rubbish. Oh yeah. <laughs> ah, lovely. Right, so now we need to decorate it. So let me get my glue gun. Hopefully it's got a bit of charge. So there's nothing fancy about what I do with my bows. Um, that, is, that machine isn't old, Sandra says. My 96-year-old singer is old, yeah. Um, but there you see they're mechanical, so they, and like mine is mechanical and they go on for donkeys. Right, so um, round three fingers, so as many times as you like. However many that was. Cut it. Okay. And then you're cutting another piece. Just gently put that down. If you've got a bow maker, you know what I'm talking about, those that know, use your bow maker. So pick up your loops, try and get them neat again. Pop your tail over the top. I'm making a bit of a piglet's ear of this. Anyway, long edge over the top, the long bit you just cut over the top. Just bring them together. Try and keep your loops the same. Do a nice knot. Switch your machine on if you remember. Oh, I've got a little bit of juice. I need to get in. I've got two and they're both very tired. They've been used so much. So let's just get that tail out of the way. Another knot just to secure. And then even if you now you've got four tails, leave all four tails on because that makes it really pretty. You can have it quite rustic looking. So it can go like that. A little bit of hot glue. And then, oh, I just squeeze some out. Got the end of the uh, stick. Do you see, it's, there's no stick there. <sighs> and then put your pom-pom on. Obviously you don't have to use a pom-pom. You can you could use sequins or something like that, or just if it, it depends what what who is it for and whether it's for um, Christmas like these or whether it's for um, a birthday. You want to sort of obviously choose your colours and choose your ribbons and and perhaps instead of a pom pom you could put a button. All sorts of things you can do, really all sorts. Um, there's a little bit of H two fifty showing there, so I'll just turn trim that away. There we go. Lovely. So what we've got is two beautiful little labels. And apart from the nose, if you wouldn't know which was which. And then of course you can get your heat erasable pen. Oop. Make sure it is a heat erasable pen. And then you can write on it. Um, to Angela love Liz with a kiss. And then if she doesn't, if she doesn't, if she can, if she's going to throw it away. This is not so hot. Ask for it back. And now you're ready for the next person. <laughs> That's a brilliant idea, brilliant idea. <laughs> but they're great to have to have on a little parcel, or um, a present, or a, I could just a, you know a regular bottle of wine. Maybe that's cost you like a fiver at Sainsbury's or Tesco or something like that. It's cost you, well, if you said the price of a fat quarter, three, two or three pounds to make the cover and to make a beautiful label. And really, those are gifts, aren't they, as well? And I know my mum has made me labels in the past to go on presents, and I've always kept them. They're beautiful. And, I, and that's really, that's what you're, you're doing. You're making memories all the time, which is so important. So important. Anyway, great little t label. Um, it's the foundation paper piecing was the thing I wanted to do with you. I think the, it's so, so easy because we're just using strips. And there you go. Master that. You can master anything. You can conquer the world. So this is it, guys. This is it till 2023. 
and on the 2nd of January our Kath will be bringing the first pattern of 2023 um, she's got something fantastic lined up we start a brand new year um, the theme will be daffodils and yellow you can already tell by my backdrop that I'm almost there <laughs> I've been filming this week and that this was filled with daffodils um, so the theme for January is kind of yellow tones, green tones, daffodils, flowers, the starting of new life, which is what we are all about. And of course, then we're going to have another year of fantastic patterns. Um, if you are a digital pass holder, this is it. There's no more digital passes. They are all still available for you. All the links are still in the featured part of the Making It Monday group. So, and they'll always be there and I'll keep them there for a year or two and then, then I'll take them off and tidy up. Um, but they're there. So and, and you can also still buy all the passes from June. So all six passes are still available for anybody that wants to buy them. And you can get the four patterns um, for every month uh, in the last six months, which is, is still for three pounds. That's still a very good deal, considering they are going to go up a little bit in price. If you are going to be a platinum member of my group, my online sewing group, then all of the Making It Monday projects will be free to you. And uh, you could then got the choice of downloading and saving and making or, or not. If you're going to stay as a regular gold member on my online sewing group, then you'll have the choice of which ones you want to pick and choose out of the, the Making It Monday projects. And obviously you can go to the website and, and pick Pick your, pick your mim and it's great to have that choice. So there we are. That's Making It Monday. That's the last one of 2023. Thank you so much for this last 12 months. It's been an absolute joy from um, leaving um, TV and working all the time, it seemed, working on TV to doing it almost solo. With Now I've got um, Kath and Jackie and all my backup team of the admin helping me. It's been quite a transformational year but I could not have done it without your support. So I'd like to wish you all a very Merry Christmas for all of my members. I'll see you on Thursday. For all of the rest of you, um, I wish you all a very Merry Christmas and a very, very Happy New Year. And um, please have fun. Um, buy each yourself lots of presents as well as sharing with each other. <laughs> it's the only way to go. And make sure you have that glass of sherry and uh, think of this Making It Monday group and what fun we've had over the last couple of years. Night night, everybody. Sleep tight and I'll see you all in the new